Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this three-part series, we are going to explore the major scale in a rather unique way. We are going to look at practicing it, understanding it and applying it in our compositions or improvisations using intervals and intervals with respect to the neighbor notes. As music is a dynamic art form, the neighbor notes will be the one before the target and the one after the target. Now, intervals can be looked at in three ways. You can look at intervals with respect to the root of the song. That could be A flat in this case, if A flat is the root and then everything would be based on the root. A flat in this case, so third, second, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, ma. See, we call it in swaras, sare gama pada ni, or in Western language or in the interval uh, theory uh, usage, we would say things like major third, major second, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, minor sixth, augmented, diminished, and all of that, which I will revise in this particular lecture. So. Intervals can be computed with respect to the root of the scale. They can be computed with respect to the chord which you're in right now. So for example, if I'm on the G major scale, but if I go to the D chord, which is the fifth degree, then you could look at all of these notes with respect to the new root or the temporary root which would be at the fifth degree so d f sharp a c let's say we are forming a d seventh chord now what would be those intervals it would be one three five seven flat why do we say seven flat because it's a minor seventh interval as opposed to the major seventh interval which is not contained in the G major scale. So intervals can be with respect to the root of the scale, with respect to the chord you're in currently, and then intervals with respect to the neighbor tones or the neighbor notes. So if you take the scale D major, two sharps, right? F sharp and C sharp. With respect to the an, a target note, let's say with respect to A, you can now form a second interval or a third interval or a fourth or a fifth or a sixth or a seventh or an octave or anything else beyond the octave as well. So from A, diatonically speaking, diatonically basically means from within the scale, diatonic. So if I take A, diatonic second would be B, not B flat. Why? Because we have committed ourselves to being in the D major scale. So a diatonic second from A will be B. Similarly, a diatonic second from B would be C sharp. Diatonic second from C sharp would be D because we are diatonic to the key of D major. Similarly, diatonic third from A would be a third. Diatonic third from B would be D and so on and so forth. So this is what we are essentially going to practice from a theoretical perspective, from a year training perspective, and obviously from a playing piano technique perspective. Now, one video might not be enough to cover all the three perspectives of interval practice, which would be theory, year training and technique because theory will also need some notation which I'm also going to guide you with. So let's make this a three-part series. Stay tuned to our channel. Once the first video drops, it's going to be released within a month's time. So we'll, we do a one video a week of this. So do stay tuned. You can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. And also feel free to leave us a comment with what you thought about the lesson and also what you'd like to learn next. Any other topics that might be a challenge for you, uh, you can let us know. Also, my handwritten notes and the staff notation for this entire series will be available on our Patreon page. So in a nutshell, part number one is going to be dedicated to music theory, the notation and what are the intervals called and how are they formed. Part two will be a series of incremental year training workouts where you're going to sing all of these neighbor intervals, all of their qualities, major, minor, along the axis of the target note. And last but not least, we will practice them on the piano. And for the entire lecture, we are going to look at two keys. It's always good to learn two scales at a time or two keys at a time. We look at the key of D major. 
two sharps and B flat major. Two flats. Okay, so now on to the lesson. Get your keyboards out. You can pause the video if you want and stay tuned till the very end. All of these concepts are very important. Let's get cracking. So first of all, broadly, the types of intervals in music. We give an interval a name as well as a number. So you will have major, minor, perfect, diminished and augmented. These are the five interval qualities in Western music. And in Indian music, how it generally works is you'll have Sare Gama Pada Ni and then any time you say Sare Gama Pada Ni, those are in reference to the major scale. So if you say Ga, just like, just Ga, then the Ga of D major would be the major third, F sharp. But then if you say Komal Ga, Komal 3, Komal generally means flat. So, so Komal Ga would be F. And then if you say Ma, you have the G, that's your normal Ma or your perfect fourth. If you say Tivra Ma, the G becomes G sharp. So in Indian music, there's a way of tackling interval naming Komal, Tivra or Shud, meaning it's, it's within the major diatonic scale and in the western world we have major minor perfect diminished as well as augmented so the major minor or all these names are the quality of the interval a major generally sounds a bit more positive while a minor sounds a bit more pensive even if you take a major sixth major six sounds very grand or epic while a minor sixth has a more mysterious attachment to it and so on and so forth, right? So major generally is part of the major scale also and the minor are generally part of the minor scale. Well, not all the minor intervals because the minor second is not part of the minor scale. The major second is part of the minor scale. So that's where it gets slightly tricky. The name of the interval, if you call it major, minor, is just a reference to the quality or the way two notes collide, the vibe created when two notes collide. So when D and E collide together, melodically or harmonically, we need to document this sound. We need to store this sound as what? Our ear has to respond to it. It has to acknowledge it. Uh, like a color, you, you look at a color orange and you've been trained over the years to call it that. So it's the same here. You need some mechanism or some system to name your, your intervals. And we have a system to name notes. We also have a system to name intervals. But then people remember the notes a lot more than intervals because of sheet reading and because of general usage. We don't use intervals a lot. We should use them a lot more because they are the building blocks of everything in music, whether it's scales, melodies, chords, advanced chords or anything you want to do is based on an interval calculation. Interval with respect to the root of the scale, interval with respect to the current chord you're in or as we are going to talk about in this lesson, intervals with respect to the neighboring notes. That would be the previous and the next one. Okay. So apart from the emotion or the vibe conveyed by major, minor, perfect, diminished, augmented, you'll also have the scale degree. So in Indian music, basically means three ma basically means four but in western music you'll have to say perfect fourth so perfect is the quality of the fourth so you say perfect fourth and when you write it there's an abbreviation you'll write small p for perfect you'll write big m for major you'll write small m for minor dim for diminished aug aug for augmented and that's pretty much it those are the western intervals major minor Diminished, perfect, augmented. So major and minor will be assigned to the second, the third, the sixth and the seventh degrees. You need to remember that. Major and minor will not be assigned to the root or the octave or the fourth and the fifth. So you don't say major fourth or minor fifth. You will say perfect fifth or else you can say augmented fifth or diminished fifth. Or you don't say major fourth or minor fourth. You say perfect fourth or augmented fourth 
in very rare cases you might call it a diminished fourth but i have never come across that usage because a diminished fourth would actually just be a major third in disguise so to speak right so an interval has a name and a number okay the number is the scale degree and the name is the quality of the sound or the vibe or the mood created when the two notes come together so if you take any kind of intervals and you read it in sheet music if you look at the seconds if it started off as a space like d is on a space the next note e would be read on a line so it will be space line or line space so if you're computing b flat on the third line of the treble clef that's b right so if you make if you consider that as b flat its second would be c which would be on a space right f a c on the third space so b flat to c so a second can easily be visualized as line space or space line thirds are very easy to visualize thirds would basically be space space or line line depending on where you started so if you take g g's third would be b so if you know your notes of the treble and the bass clef e g b d f the lines f a c e the spaces these are the real ones and then under e you'll have c again under c you'll have a and then e g b d f you go further up you go a and then the higher c and then f a c e above that you'll have g and b so essentially the spaces move in thirds and the lines also move in thirds so instead of remembering fancy sentences uh, to remember the lines and spaces you might as well just mug up your thirds because that's a real world requirement not remembering things like every good boy or some such nonsense i guess so you can forget that that that's counterproductive i would recommend go in thirds thirds are a very important interval in music e g b d f you have to remember that but you also have to remember g b d f a you'll also have to remember b d f a c you'll also have to remember d f a c e so then what is the point of that that strange sentence in the first place right so visualizing thirds is very easy space space or line line and magi remembering the alphabet thirds is also easy the thing the thing with alphabet intervallic calculation would be it's literally based on the alphabet so if someone says get me a third it's always going to be named as an alphabet third so if you take e e's third will always be e f g so you could call it an alphabet third or even an english third so if you look at what is a third when you call when you write the final answer someone says what is the third of b flat okay now you first have to ask the question what kind of third is it the major third or is the minor third we do have a diminished third also let's not get into that so someone says what is the third from b flat and of course you have to ask the question okay i'll tell you is it major third or minor third so now if that individual says uh, i'm not sure and you want to tell them both the thirds the major third and the minor third will be represented by the same alphabet so b flat third will be b c d alphabet third you're counting english letters to get to that final answer but the quality depending on whether it's major or minor major third from b flat would be d minor third from b flat would be d flat okay but yet the alphabetical distance between b and d would be re retained and because of that it will look the same in staff notation so b flat will be let's say on the line the line b flat on the treble clef and then its third would be d flat so b flat to d flat that would be a minor third now b flat to d would be a major third and then you have the other let, let's say it was not even b flat in the first place you'll still write it as b on the same third line g b d right so what will be b's major third some kind of d so that won't be d flat that will be d won't even be normal d it will be d sharp so b's major third is d sharp 
B is minor third is D and then B flats major third is D and B flats minor third is D flat now you might be thinking can i call it C sharp well that will be theoretically wrong you'll have to say D flat if you're referring to thirds so it will be good to have some alphabet practice of intervals a good practice would just be to sing or to say the alphabets in both directions in a circular way so what are the alphabets in music a b c d e f g that's all it's easier than english come to think of it so you go a b c d e f g a b c d e f g now you might think that is easy which i think it is it sounds ridiculous right someone might think something is wrong with you at home or who is this teacher but actually stick stick with me you should then start with the b and then again go alphabetically and it recycles back to a so a b c d e f g b c d e f g a c d e f g a b d e f g a b c e f g a b c d f g a b c d e g a b c d e f and a b c d e f g so we've done that in quavers then you can push yourself to do it in semi quavers a b c d e f g b c d e f g a c d e f g a b d e f g a b c e f g a b c d f g a b c d e g a b c d e f and so on don't forget to also count these alphabets counter clockwise so then it'll be a g f e d c b b a g f e d c c b a g f e d d c b a g f e e d c b a g f f e d c b a g g f e d c b a even i'm going to watch this edit and see if i got it right i hope i did and it's something you need to keep practicing over time because if you can say a b c d e f g or even b c d e f g a b major is just a step away where you need to remember which are the sharps and flats so that will be b c sharp d sharp e f sharp g sharp a sharp and b because b has five sharps in there b flat major on the other hand still starts on the b but has two flats so you continue saying b c d e f g a and append the flat suffix to b and e because those are the two flats so it's going to be b flat c d e flat f g a b flat and while you narrate this and while you write it i'd also encourage you to draw the piano shape of each of these scales as we are mo mostly pianists watching this so b major b flat major right so the white and black key assortments so moving on to the reading of other intervals seconds are line space or space line thirds are basically the line to the very next line space to the very next space and then what about fourths so fourths will have a gap so the 2 4 and the 6 will have either a line space relationship or a space line relationship so if you take 4 it's going to be let's take e e is on the first line it's a it's a line its fourth will be a e f g a alphabet 4 okay and it just so happens that in the d major scale the 4 is a perfect 4 so e f sharp g a in the d major scale where is a well it you have to skip and it will be on the second space so there'll be a gap there now with perfect fifths it's going to be skipping but line will become line like e's third would be b but we skip that g in the middle similarly f sharp's third why am i saying f sharp because i'm thinking in in the case of d major f sharp would be the third degree third note its fifth would be c sharp f sharp to to c sharp and how do we notate it f sharp would be on the first space c sharp would be on the third space and then both of them have to be written as sharps or not because if you refer to the key signature of d major as having two sharps the two sharps are understood as f sharp and c sharp that's the point of a key signature and then you don't even have to write the sharps or flats if it's b flat you just have to write f and c okay and then the sixth interval again you have a gap and it will be let's say the sixth from e will be what in the key of d major e f g a b 
C sharp. So you will write line E going to space C sharp. Okay. The seventh, what happens is you will skip two lines. So E to the D. You're going to skip two lines and visualize the D there. We have this in our notation. You can get a copy of it on our Patreon and you can visualize this easier. And we'll also give you a Muse score file. So if you import it or even a MIDI file as well will be included. You can import it into any MIDI player and actually hear this stuff on both the scales. So if you have E, it's seventh would be D. It's sixth would be C sharp. It's fifth would be B. It's fourth would be A. It's third would be and it's second would be F sharp. Now the same thing will apply to B flat major. I'm not going to focus too much on it, but let's just maybe handpick one note of the B flat major scale just for clarity. Let's take the note F. Now F happens to be the fifth degree, right? The fifth note of B flat major scale. What is F's second? G. Then what is F's third? A. Then what is F's fourth? B flat, not B, B flat because we are in the B flat scale. What's F's fifth? C. What's F's sixth? D. What's F's seventh? Not E because E is not part of B flat scale, so you'll have to write E flat. And finally, the octave. So how do you visualize an octave? If F is a space, its octave would be a line. Or if F was notated as a line, then its octave would be a space. Remember that 2, 4, 6, 8 ecosystem. 2, 4, 6, 8 means any interval of a 2, 4, 6, 8 will have the, the line space combination. It will be space line or line space. If it's 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on, it would be same. It would be either space space or line line. So coming back to the note F, First off, F is in the key of the B flat major scale. I repeat, F is in the scale of B flat major. Okay, so it's second G, it's third A, it's fourth B flat, it's fifth C, it's sixth D, and it's seventh E flat. Now you might be thinking, isn't F the root? No, it, F is the fifth. But all of these intervals are with respect to it, with respect to the current note. And then from the current note to its neighboring notes. So if I even go back to B flat, B flat second is C, B flat's third is D, B flat's fourth is E flat, B flat's fifth is F, B flat sixth is G, B flat seventh is A, B flat's octave is B flat. And you need to also remember the types of these intervals. So you'll have to know that the second is not a minor second, it's a major second. Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, octave, and the same equation for D. So we'll also have a chart where we'll write down each note of the scale and with respect to that, its own second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and the, the qualities of those intervals. So you should definitely check that out. Now the last topic I have for you in this theoretical part of our three-part series would be to explore every interval with respect to each note. So let's look at the D major scale and look at all the intervals from everywhere. So if you take the second intervals, you'll have major second, major second, minor second, major second, major second, major second, and minor second. So in conclusion, there will be two minor seconds. So if you look at how a major scale is formed, major scale as the textbooks tell us, two, two, one, two, 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 one. So that one is a minor second interval. The two is a major second interval. So you can remember it that way. Major second from every first to the second. Major second from the two to the three. Minor second from three to four. 
major second from 4 to 5 major second from 5 to 6 major second from 6 to 7 and then minor second from 7 to the octave so that was about seconds now let's come to thirds so you'll start so the way to remember it the way I like to remember it is the first, the fourth and the fifth degree of a major scale all form major chords. So their thirds will also be major, isn't it? So you could do major third, major third, major third. So major third, major third, major third. There we go. And then what about the uh, minor thirds? That'll be all the remaining, the two, second degree, the third degree the 6th degree and the 7th degree which forms a diminished chord but a diminished chord also has a minor third in it it's minor minor isn't it so from the 2nd degree you'll have a minor third from the 3rd degree you'll have a minor third from the 6th degree you'll have a minor third and the 7th degree you'll have a minor third okay that also forms a diminished so you'll have a major third minor third Minor third, major third, major third. Then you'll have minor third, another minor third. And then carbon copy or the octave being a major third. So we've covered the second. Where are the minor seconds in the seconds? From the third to fourth degree and from the seventh to the octave. What about the thirds again? Some are major, some are minor. Which ones are major? One, four, five major. Which ones are minor? Two, three, six, seven. Okay, coming to the fourth. Fourth is very easy. Every fourth from every note will be a perfect fourth except for the fourth degree. I repeat, every fourth will be a perfect fourth in the major scale except for the fourth degree. So, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, not a perfect fourth. What is that? Sounds different, doesn't it? So it's a Thivra Ma. This would have been a normal perfect four, but that's not part of the D major scale because it has a C sharp in it. So that's an augmented fourth. So you need to remember. Perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, or Thivra Ma, augmented fourth. And now continue. Perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth. Perfect fourth Augmented at the fourth degree Okay, and what about the fifth? So you need to remember that because in any major scale, it's going to hold good. We'll revise it before the this part ends on the B flat major scale. So you have to memorize this we have a chart to help you remember okay so now you'll have the fifths we've covered two three four we are on fifth so perfect everything is going to be a perfect fifth except for the seventh degree the seventh will be a diminished fifth so let's walk that through perfect fifth perfect fifth perfect fifth perfect fifth perfect fifth perfect fifth diminished fifth See, that forms the diminished chord, right? The tritone. Diminished fifth. Perfect fifth. Seventh degree is diminished. All the rest are perfect. Mm -hmm. The fifth interval offers some very nice harmony, especially for rock music. We call, we call that as a power chord. Okay, now what about the sixth? Sixth again could be either major sixth or minor sixth. So you start off with a major sixth, major sixth, minor sixth. Okay, a good trick would be a major sixth is nothing but an octave plus two steps, chromatic steps. So that's an octave. Plus two will give you a major sixth. Major sixth. Major sixth. That's one. So minor six also sounds different. Minor sixth. Major sixth. Then major sixth. Then minor. And then minor. 
major so major major minor major major minor minor major and last but not least the seventh intervals the seventh intervals again can either be major intervals major seventh or minor seventh so it will be the way i like to remember it is the 1 and the 4 will form major sevenths everything else is minor so 1 major seventh minor on the 2 minor on the 3 major seventh on the 4 Minor seventh on the five, so you need to remember that. That's what gives you that mixolydian mode. And then minor seventh on the six, that gives you your relative minor. And then you have your flat seven on the Locrian degree or the seventh degree. And then major. So major seventh would be at the one and the four. Major seventh, minor seventh. Minor seventh, major seventh, minor seventh, minor seventh, minor seventh, major seventh, which is at the root or the octave degree. And octaves are self-explanatory. We just call them octaves. You don't have a major octave or a minor octave and all of that complication. So we've covered every single interval from every note of the D major scale. so essentially every single diatonic interval there is to get in the key of d major i don't know how to put this in an official way if there is an official theoretical description for this type of interval do let me know in the comments but this is very important when you're composing music because and even when you're dealing with chord progressions which chord is at what degree that's based on the interval so if you know that the interval of the fifth if the fifth note of d which is a if that interval is a, a minor seventh you know it's automatically going to give you a dominant seventh chord well not automatically you know that that's an option and that's not an option major seventh chord won't be there so knowing the interval from anywhere in the scale is very helpful for chords very helpful to go from one point to the other compositionally like i go d and then play f sharp but now from f sharp i can either go ascending to f sharp's fifth or i can go descending to f sharp's lower fifth but the decision to move from point b to point c in why am i calling f sharp as point b because i started with d which is uh, assumed as point a so f sharp c sharp from here so one now i don't need to care about my root so from f sharp i don't have to necessarily care about what the root is f sharp c sharp which is the perfect fifth or f sharp c sharp or i could go up a four from f sharp f sharp b or f sharp b the same b down or f sharp a which is a minor third or f sharp a which is down a minor third or a to f sharp would be a six so you, i hope you get what i'm saying in the sense that at at a certain point in time when you're listening to a song to gauge the notes or when you're composing a song at a certain point in time you may not care much about the root you may not you don't need to keep thinking about what the root is uh, you know it is important but it is not the only thing when it comes to intervals intervals can be with respect to the root with respect to your chord or with respect to well the most common sense uh, uh, process of them all which is which is with respect to either the previous note or the next note that's it you know that's pretty much what i call as neighbor tones so moving on we've covered the theory and the notation exhaustively i hope and what we'll do in the next part is we'll just have a quick recap of all this so stay tuned to that and we'll start focusing on training our ear i'll be giving you a lot of incremental exercises which will allow you to hear this stuff so i want you to know the stuff i want you to hear the stuff and finally in part 3 i want you to play this stuff which will be more on a technical aspect how to play all these intervals uh, in terms of seconds thirds fourths fifths sixths and sevenths so do stay tuned 
tuned get my notes on patreon and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for regular notifications so you don't lose track when the new video hits you not just this series but other videos as well thanks for watching the video everyone cheers catch you in the next one